Okay, so I've been geeking out over this for the last half an hour or so, and I, I feel like I really have to make a video on this. I've been a huge fan of Meshuggah and Thomas Hockey's drumming for so long now, and there's always been this one fill that Thomas does that I, I could never really figure out exactly what he's doing, and that's the, the drum fill like in the middle of the guitar solo in the song Stenga. I'll leave a link in the description to that exact timestamp in that song so you can check it out if you haven't heard it. Uh, so go do that and you'll kind of see what I mean. He has these kick accents and those, those accents are easy to follow. You can hear where they are, but it's what he's doing between the kick accents that has always eluded me. He's playing something on the tom. So like, how many notes is that? What, what exactly is really going on there? I've never really been able to figure it out. And today I was looking around on YouTube checking out some video videos of Thomas is playing to do a reaction slash analysis type of video on. And I, dis I discovered this video of Thomas, a really quick video, just two minutes of him uh, doing a performance for Sonar. And in it, I stumble upon a fill that he does which is very similar to that uh, Stenga fill. Not in necessarily in the fill in and of itself, like the whole thing, but rather just like the concept that he's doing. We have these easy to follow kick notes uh, and in between it, he's doing something else on his hands, some other type of subdivision uh, that's a little bit harder to follow. Like, hey, what's exact what exactly is going on here? So let's listen to that fill right here uh, and you'll kind of see what I mean. Just that quick little burst of notes on the rack tom and on the snare drum, uh, separated by these kick notes. Let's hear it one more time. Just that quick little note, a uh, burst of notes. Um, so I, I, I took this and I started to kind of figure out what was going on. So first step here is to uh, just kind of figure out where are the kick notes in this bar. So written out, I, I put, uh, like if you count the eighth notes, I put three uh, like cross sticks just to kind of, so we can hear what the time is in the beginning. And then we have these kick accents. So they are separated by two sixteenth notes. So we have a three sixteenth note uh, phrasing here on the on the kick notes. And then we have this ending. And I put a crash at the end just so we can kind of hear it as one bar. He continues playing other stuff. But uh, if we listen to this, this is like the, the skeleton of what's being played here. Just like that. That's the phrasing we want to listen for. Where the kick accents land within this bar. So you, you hear this as one, two, three, four, and then, yeah, that's it. So two, three, four, one. So now that we have this, now we have to figure out, okay, so what is he doing with his hands? So I slowed down the video and I looked at it carefully and it, it was what I thought he was doing. I just wasn't really sure about it. He's just playing four notes with his hands on the rack tom and then on the snare drum. So we basically have a five note grouping. There's the kick and then there's four notes on the rack tom and then there's a kick again and there's this four notes on the snare. So we have two groups of five, kick plus four, kick plus four. The tricky thing is here, what the hell does the subdivision become here? He's playing groupings of five, so you would automatically think, okay, so maybe that's, sub, that's the, the subdivision of quintuplets. But he's playing it within a span of three sixteenth notes. That does not go evenly. Uh, we have five in the span of three, five notes in the span of three notes. So how the hell do we actually write this out? And how, do, how the hell do we figure out like, how to approach this uh, when we want to play it ourselves? One more time, let's just hear the fill. Which is a really quick burst of notes. But uh, so what, what I had to do here was basically we take this span of three and we have to, to expand it into something that we can fit uh, five evenly into. So basically we, now we're getting into a bit of math here, but we have to find the, common, uh, the lowest common denominator between the numbers three and five. And that happens to be 15. So if we can take this, these three notes and just make them faster and add more notes uh, until we get to 15, it's going to look like this. This just looks like absolute chaos, but bear with me here. It's going to make sense soon. Uh, again, this, this blue area now, this is the exact amount of time as this blue area. This is three notes. This is 15 notes, but they're uh, five times as fast. So it all evens out. So if we listen to this now, these are all just rests. They're just, nothing's being played here, but we still have the kick notes, right? So if we listen to this, it's going to sound the, the exact same. Compared to this, it's still the exact same thing. We just increased the amount of rests in between. So now we can start putting in those evenly spaced notes on the rack tom and the snare, and we're going to get this, this five notes in the span of three. So what that looks like, 
is is this and it still looks like chaos because we still have all the rests here but i just put in uh every third note i put in this uh these rack tom strokes four of them right and then we get to the kick and we have every third note we have a snare 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 so if we listen to this this is what he's playing we're basically playing five notes in the span of what you, what previously what previously was three. Now this looks like chaos. So what we can do here is we can take uh, these groupings of three because we basically have one note and then two rests, right? We don't need to have these rests written out here. We can take this uh, note, this group of three, increase the subdivision and make it a dotted note. So we have like one and a half of that note, uh, and then it looks a lot better and it looks like this. So we basically have what? So what is this actually? <laughs> Sorry, this is uh, dotted. 30 second yeah dotted 30 second notes in quintuplet brackets it's just it's just crazy uh when he plays it it just sounds so fluent and i've i've kind of stumbled upon this type of thing sometimes in my own playing as well where you basically just play that kick note grouping of one two three one two three, like the, the 16th note grouping and that's all you're listening for and you fill in the gaps with whatever amount of notes you feel like and you don't really care about the subdivision you just care about the sound and the end result so this this is a, you don't have to have a supercomputer in your head to play this stuff it can kind of come out come out of you naturally but if you want to know what's going on, he's playing dotted 30 second notes in quintuplets, uh, quintuplet brackets. It's just nuts. And again, the full fill sounds like this. It's just a very, very cool kind of rolling effect. And again, and again, when he does it, it sounds a lot better. It sounds like this. I just love this. This this speaks to the the inner geek in me, and and more than most importantly, it it allowed me to finally figure out what's going on in that fill in the the Stenga solo. Because I went back and I listened to that song, and sure as hell, that's what he's doing there too. He's he's playing these groupings of three sixteenth notes on the bass drum, and he's filling it in on the toms with these quit this this thing <laughs> right so uh this is just pure like nerding and theory yeah theory craziness but i think it's really really cool to dig into this kind of stuff uh, you can find these little quirks with with certain drummers where they have these things they they like to throw in that you don't you might not pay too much attention to but when you dig into it there's some really interesting stuff going on so this is like thomas's secret weapon almost i don't know if really i don't really know if people appreciate what's going on here uh because now that i think about it and now that i check out more of his stuff he does this a lot i watched some other clips uh just like cl people that filmed uh during when he was doing like a clinic or something you know filming it from the audience when he's just like improvising and not really playing with meshuga but rather just playing uh you can hear this type of stuff every so often in his playing it just kind of comes out naturally again for him so uh, yeah, I don't really know what else to say about this. I just wanted to share this, the fact that I finally figured it out. Uh, and it's pretty wild. 30 second, dotted 30 second notes in quintuplet brackets, everyone. That's Thomas's secret weapon, or at least one of them. Uh, so yeah, hope you enjoy this. I don't know if this made any sense. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this. And um, I'll do some more videos for you guys sometime soon. Take care.